Good evening, everybody. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everybody back to another school year here at the Harold L. Qualters Middle School. My name is David McGovern, and I'm the principal here at Qualters. And I thank you, everyone, for joining me today for our phase one remote learning presentation. Throughout this presentation, we aim to give you the information we need for a successful launch of the school year as we enter a new time of remote learning. As I mentioned, my name is Dave McGovern, and I'm the principal here at Qualters. In the chat feature, I'm joined by Mr. Kevin Hoffman and Dr. Uh, Ms. Mary Cotillo, my assistant principals, Dr. Zach Abrams, our assistant director of special education, as well as Teresa Murphy, uh, who is our superintendent of schools and assistant superintendent of teaching and learning, uh, Mr. Conley. Today for my agenda, I'm going to <coughs> address a new a number of topics. Uh, but again, today we're focusing on that phase one remote learning. I'm going to be talking about our objective remote of remote learning this year and how that differs from what was experienced in the spring. I'm going to make sure that people understand the difference between our virtual remote cohort and our school-based model. I'm gonna talk about our daily logistics and remote learning that all students will be experiencing as we launch the school year here at QMS. I'm gonna talk about our offerings this year and how we've had to make some adjustments to those. I'm gonna talk about the teams at QMS this year. I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna to do to launch the school year. And then for our sixth grade uh, families in particular, uh, please stay on at the end so that we can uh, give the proper attention that's necessary for our grade six transition in this different environment. I need to ask all families to throw out their understandings of remote learning at the uh, during the spring of 2020. During the spring of 2020, we followed guidance from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that remote learning was to just maintain student connectedness to the school. We were advised to be very lenient in all of our policies, and we were advised to maintain shorter school days. We are now entering a new school year, and we need to recognize that remote learning will look very different this year. The objective of our remote learning and all learning, hybrid or full in person this year, is to advance our curriculum in a manner that addresses the needs of all learners. I'm going to talk more in this presentation about what that entails, but I want to make sure that I set the stage that any comparisons to what was experienced in the uh, in the fall uh, spring rather would not be appropriate. So again, I think to make sure we're on the same page, my advice is to just kind of throw that away and look at this as something anew. We will have two models as we start the school year. The first is our virtual remote cohort. This is a model for students and families that have made the decision that they are not gonna receive in-person education this year for the full year. Uh, these students will be enrolled in the Mansfield Public Schools, and they will be placed in our virtual remote teams. Please understand that although we do recognize situations will arise where a student may need to enter or exit the virtual remote cohort, that this is not a simple drop-in, drop-out type scenario. We have based our staffing this year at the Qualters Middle School um, in terms of who's working with our re virtual remote students and who's working with everybody else based on the information we have from our families. And we will be able to accommodate a child here or a child there. However, if we had a mass influx one way or the other, please understand that the model would not stand up and we would have to really revisit our master schedule, our roles of our faculty, and really be in a position where we need to restructure the entire school. We also have our school-based model. This is starting remote with an anticipation of 
uh, transitioning to hybrid in mid-October. This is the default placement for our students. If you did not register for the virtual remote cohort, you are in the school-based model um, and you will start remote and then transition to hybrid. So I wanna make sure that people understand that we have these two um, different models or, or really a school within a school um, going on here where different people will be in different types of situations. Again, um, at Qualters, our virtual remote cohort will be taught by Qualters teachers. Um, so please keep that in mind. We will have two remote teams this year and I'll go into more information about that later. Uh, they will be creating and delivering our instruction to our students. Um, and again, that virtual remote cohort will stay together for the whole year um, within that model. Next, I'm going to talk about the daily logistics in remote learning. This will apply to all students at the Qualters Middle School for the first month of school. For the students in the virtual remote cohort, these expectations will continue on for the rest of the year as the rest of the school in the school-based model will then continue um, into a hybrid model as anticipated in mid-October. <clears throat> Student attendance is required. Um, attendance will be taken first period every day, um, just taken online. Um, and we're gonna send out the automated phone calls around nine o'clock if your child did not come to first period. Um, using our typical normal system. Uh, we're also taking attendance at the end at the start of each period. Um, and we need to have different scenarios, which I'll talk about a little bit more. But attendance will be verified at the end, either by um, participation um, in something at the event or a deliverable like an assignment or an exit ticket. We're going to be notifying parents um, if your child, and I'm just using kind of that in school phrase, uh, is skipping class. Now, I'll be honest, as an administrator, in my entire time in the Mansfield Public Schools, I think I've dealt with skipping class twice. Um, I do think that's something we're going to have to navigate with our students, um, and I want to make sure that we set that expectation. When we make that call, obviously, it's important on their learning, but it's really a notification more than anything else. We need you to also please call the main office to report an absence or dismissal. Just as you would during the traditional school day, if your child needs to be absent from remote learning, we're asking you to follow the same procedure that you would follow if we were fully in person so that we know and can notify your child's teachers that they will not be in attendance that day. If you need to dismiss your child, um, again, follow the same process so that we know, okay, your, your, um, your son or daughter is going to be in, you know, first, second, and third period, but from fourth period on, they're, they're going to be off doing whatever um, that child needs, whether it's a dentist appointment or an orthodontist or something along those lines. Our promotion policy is in effect. And I'm going to talk about that now, and I'm going to talk about that with grading. Um, a student who fails any um, well, area, but also those whose attendance does not meet our state guidelines may be considered for retention. So it's very important that we make sure we're working with our students to be in attendance while they're engaged in remote learning. Grading this time around. For those of you who were with us in the uh, spring, um, we had this participation and engagement rubric. Again, I need you to throw that out, OK? Um, we're running our traditional alphanumeric grading structure, A, B, C, D, et cetera. Um, we are running a trimester-based model, as we have been the past couple of years. Um, there'll be report cards and there will be um, uh, progress reports, regardless of what model we're in at what time. Everything will be designed this year to continually build on each other. Academic integrity is something that I believe is going to be an issue we have to really work with our students on this year. Um, and this is the ongoing policy that's within the QMS handbook about plagiarized work and and how we work through those instances here at QMS. And again, our promotion policy is in effect. Students need to pass English, math, history, 
and science for the year, and we'd evaluate that based on their average of all three trimesters. Students who failed one or two of those subjects would qualify for summer school, and those who uh, have failed more would be looking at retention, which is a situation here at QMS we always want to avoid. Your child is going to have a, a full school day running the entire uh, time of the typical school day during remote learning. They will experience six different lessons a day. Every lesson is going to start on Google Meet, and the teachers will be getting those Google Meet information to your students using Google Classroom. At the start of this lesson, our teachers could review expectations, talk about the objective and the schedule that's going to be followed. They could be following direct instruction, following up what was done in the previous class, a lot of different things. One thing I do want to be clear about, though, is that any I, I, I don't think you'd find a middle school today where the teacher lectures for the full 50 minutes. In fact, as an administrator, I would consider that poor practice. So as we move forward to the lesson, realize that after that, that period of direct instruction or, or review of expectations, our students are going to gain, engage in meaningful learning activities. All of our materials uh, digitally will be distributed and collected via Google Classroom. I'm probably going to repeat myself on this later on, but we are going to make sure that parents and students have Google, their students' Google credentials. The, um, um, those will be mailed to families prior to the start of the school. However, they are the same Google credentials students had last year if they were in the Man uh, Mansfield Public Schools. We're just trying to prepare for that situation where a student may have forgotten their password over the summer break. Your child's teacher is going to be available throughout that entire class period. Now, because they have to figure out how they're going to be working with students that day, it may be appropriate for them to stay on the Google Meet for the entire class to be able to respond uh, to students that way. However, I want to also make sure that our families understand that even in the traditional classroom, the teacher needs to maintain the flexibility to work with small groups of students um, or to move between groups of students um, or to have more private conversations. So the teacher, um, if they decide they need that flexibility, which they would have in the traditional classroom, um, they will advise the class that instead of be staying live on the Google Meet, that the child can be re reach their teacher during that period through Google Hangouts or Google Chat, which is really the same application. Um, one's a text feature within it, and one is a voice-to-voice, uh, voice uh, one-on-one, kind of like a one-on-one -on -one Google Meet. Again, the teacher is not going to disappear. But those are the two vehicles that our teachers will be using to stay in class, uh, to stay available to their students throughout the period. There are two ways that a class can end. Uh, and again, with the attendance requirements, we do need to end with a definable way that we can use to, um, we need to end in a definable manner that lets us know whether or not students participated for the entire class period. One might be a closing Google Meet. The other might be the submission of a deliverable where, you know, if it's an assessment or test or something, that, that something has to be turned in through Google Classroom at the end of the period. I wanted to take a moment here to talk about what the start of a normal school year looks like in terms of instruction. We as educators know that the relationships we establish with our students are the foundation of successful learning activities throughout the entire school year. During my time as principal here at Qualters, I have emphasized to my faculty that they use the first few days of the school year to get to know their students and to establish routines and practices prior to diving into the curriculum. That is more important now than ever, particularly where some of our students have never even had the opportunity to step foot within our hallways. You should fully expect that a, that a significant amount of class time, the first few days of school, will be built, will be devoted to this practice, as we recognize at Qualters it is a foundational component to a solid education. I also believe for our school-based cohort that you'll see that continue again once we start welcoming some students back into our hallways. 
In terms of a daily routine, at 7.15 every morning, uh, that's 10 minutes prior to the start of first period, um, there's going to be a daily email sent from the main office. Uh, most likely will be one of our office assistants, Ms. Hazel or Ms. Presentado. That email is gonna be a reminder uh, to students of what day of the cycle it is and what is the order of sections or the order of classes. Um, the term sections is what our computer program uses. So it's the word we use with our, our faculty and students is going to be that day to make sure that there's no confusion. Again, that daily attendance will be taken first thing, first period. We have six 50 minute periods this year. We also have a 44 minute academic support block. The daily announcements that typically would have come out first period if students were in the building will actually be emailed to students from the main office. Uh, it will be a mix of myself, Mr. Hoffman, and Ms. Catillo that create those on a daily basis um, during that academic support block, which is after second period. ASB is going to be a great opportunity for a screen bake for our students. There will be anchor activities that students engage upon, such as sustained silent reading, although teams will be defining um, really the most appropriate ways to use that by grade and by team. Period two teachers, so whatever child your period, your uh, whatever class your child has period two will be providing extra help to small groups during this time. Um, not every child needs extra help every day, but realize that that is a key piece, a uh, key component of this model that we have employed here uh, this year. I also need to make sure that our families understand that our teachers may not always be available during this period, as they may be required to participate in IEP or 504 meetings at this time. Typically during a, a normal school year, we may be providing coverage for teachers during their classes to come down. And in this environment, we're making sure that we help to protect some of this time for that. Lunch every day is uh, from 11.38 to 12.05. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but really we're following uh, time on learning requirements and, and state guidelines, and that's why it kind of gets to those weird times like 11.38, which to people in education doesn't look that abnormal. Homework will be kept at a minimum during remote learning, but we definitely aren't going to not have homework. Um, so please take, uh, please keep a mind, uh, please keep your, um, This is going to be a very tiring day for our students. Homework is going to be kept at a minimum, and I know I was just kind of getting tongue-tied there, and I apologize uh, for our students. But realize that there are things like studying and review and um, getting caught up on stuff someone may have missed or something like that that's not going to be avoidable. So don't consider it as no homework, but recognize that it is going to be kept during a, re a minimum during remote learning. We, I don't have all the information yet, but we will be offering remote clubs and activities. Um, just like I have to do every year, we got to identify the teachers who are running room, get the schedules and all of that. So that information will come up shortly after the start of the school year, but do recognize that those will be continuing even in a remote environment. This is the daily schedule that students will follow. Um, again, uh, it's the same six-day schedule we'll be following in the building when we're in a hybrid model or full in-person. Uh, the times vary by model by model uh, between models, but this is pretty much the the, the schedule um, that we will be following. It's just we have to get additional lunches later on in the year and stuff like that, which just tweaks the the start and end times, but not the length of the periods. We have fifty-minute periods across the board all year long. You can see that each child has two classes, ASB, which is not a break per se, um, but at least it's a change of pace for our students, two classes, the lunch, and then two classes. I'd like to thank the people who served on the teaching and learning committee uh, for, the, for the district, as well as um, my own faculty for helping me develop this schedule. The schedule meets the time on learning requirements required by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. It also rotates on a daily basis because if a child's not that great in the morning, not a morning person, which by the way, in eighth grade, I was not a morning person, um, they're not having that impact on the same class every single day. You can also see um, that uh, we build our schedule even normal so that last 
the last period each day is the first the next so that our students can start to establish that routine. Uh, but you can also recognize this goes from 725 to 149, which are the same hours of our traditional school day. I'd like to talk a little bit about course offerings at the Qualters Middle School and acknowledge that given some of the other accommodations we've had to make to our schedule, particularly related to distancing, um, we've had to make adjustments to what we, we've offered. Um, our master schedule has been modified to prioritize the balanced and lowest average, not average isn't even the right word, balanced class sizes that are the smallest possible. Um, because when we come back to, to the building in that hybrid model at six feet, or hopefully later on in the, in the year, in a more in-person, a full in-person uh, model, we need to separate students between at least between three and six feet. We at Qualters also have, our classrooms are like snowflakes. No two is the same, and they uh, we do have some smaller rooms. So really the maximum class size in the best case scenario in all the models we can run is 16. There's a few rooms we can get 18 into. With our previous class, our pre previous master schedule rather, um, we had many classes that were in that 21 to 24 range, which in a normal year would not have been a problem. Um, in fact, I would have been jumping for joy, but in this environment was not something that was sustainable throughout the school year. We also had to restructure our teams and our faculty to facilitate the virtual remote learning cohort um, using Harold L. Qualters Middle School teachers. Um, so obviously that resulted in some changes. There are some significant, albeit temporary, program changes that we will need to work through this year. In sixth grade, um, we will be running our sixth grade math program with some slight modifications this year. We will move to a differentiated model where students in math will be heterogeneously grouped. However, assessments and enrichment activities will be differentiated based on student ability. This is being done for a couple of reasons. One, it is being done due to the gap of time that spanned the last few months of school without full advancement of the curriculum at the end of fifth grade. The second has to do with maintaining balanced class sizes and, and maintaining our uh, a consistent program of offerings throughout the school. Um, this was something that we did try to um, evaluate different ways in which we can handle, and we felt that this was the way that would open up the door um, to allow the, all of our students to succeed. Our sixth grade math teachers will be communicating with families to make sure they understand where they're progressing and where they are with the enriched work as opposed to the grade level work. And please realize that this does include differentiated assessments based on student performance. We will have a reduction in specials this year. Uh, because I've had to repurpose large portions of my faculty within their areas of certification to lower those average class sizes across the building. Typically, we would offer six 60-day specials per year to all of our students. Going into the upcoming school year, that will be reduced to three. We also have a reduction in our ensembles program chorus, orchestra, and band. This is really for two reasons. One are that the obstacles, and I wanna be clear, that's not an elimination, that's a reduction. We obviously don't have any time frame right now of when we could actually put our large ensembles together in the same classroom. Secondly, there are serious obstacles with the masking and other requirements to running wind instruments and choral in our choral program. These limitations are not insurmountable, but they definitely will require some adaptation on behalf of our teachers. Additionally, to make sure we can maintain a robust um, specials program for all of our students, both of our ensemble teachers will be partially teaching some general music classes to provide a full and enriching student program for all of our students. More information about our ensembles program will be coming out in the coming weeks. 
unfortunately this year, um, and it is, this really pains me to say this, um, we have had to suspend our grade seven world language program to make sure that we can offer all languages to our eighth grade. Um, this is one of those program adjustments that was difficult to make um, and really painful uh, from a personal level because um, same with the music program, these are things that as the principal of the school I think are really foundational. Um, and I would never ever suggest this in, in, under any normal conditions, uh, but we will not be offering a language program in seventh grade this year. Although our academic learning center doesn't work with a, a wide variety of, of teachers, uh, of students rather, um, I did unfortunately need to make the decision to repurpose our ALC teachers um, to in classroom positions to make sure that we could continue to maintain those smaller class sizes throughout the building through for the year. And we're also uh, typically offer a first year language program, which would have been first year French this year in eighth grade, and we are unable to do so this year. Um, those students who are slated for the first year language program will continue into the second year of the language that they were they took within seventh grade. And we'll be working with our language teachers to find a way to make sure that that course um, is a successful experience for those students. Please understand that none of those changes are anything that would be taken lightly and that are really a, a product of our need to make a safe learning environment for students once they are in the building and to prioritize that distancing and to make sure that we can offer a robust virtual remote program for those students who will not be able to join us in the building at all this year. I'd now like to walk through grade by grade as to what offerings we will have. For the school-based model, uh, which again, as a reminder, is that model that is starting remote and transitioning to hybrid in mid-October, we'll offer our core courses of ELA that differentiated math, science, social studies, and literacy. The same will be available for the students in our virtual remote cohort. Students in the school-based model will experience three specials throughout the year. They will experience digital literacy, which is a computer course, 60 days, wellness, which is another 60-day class, blended health and physical education, and 60 days of general music. Our students in the virtual remote cohort will again have the same core program and, and have the opportunity to participate in art, performing arts, and wellness, which again is a hybrid, um, uh, physical education and health program. I do understand and wish that we could have everything identical for every student, but when we, I do need to just stress the fact that really and truly my faculty to make this a successful experience for all of our students is stretched incredibly thin. They have been in over the course of the summer learning new curriculums of which they are certified for and within state guidelines but that they have not taught before. With the ongoing changes we've experienced this year, I literally have many teachers in this building who are prepping and spending their time preparing for the fourth different curriculum um, that, uh, to start the school year as we've gone through changes and iterations of our master schedule. I can't say enough about the hard work that my teachers have been doing to prepare for this upcoming school year. Seventh grade uh, and eighth grade, we are offering the full um, math program in the school-based model. Um, we're offering our English language arts program, math, math accelerated and math enriched in the school-based model, uh, science, social studies. A change here is literacy in seventh grade as opposed to world language. Um, having to work with the faculty we have on board here within the building to provide the most successful experience we can have this year required the facilitation of the uh, the transition of that program this year it will be a continuation of the sixth grade literacy program experience within seventh grade in seventh grade our students will experience three specials unlike sixth grade we will not have the uh um we'll have a full pe and health, uh, 60 days of each. This is particularly because of our SOS program, um, or not program, or, or mandate, which is a, a suicide prevention program that we're mandated to deliver through our health curriculum. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons that we maintain the full 60 days of phys ed and 60 days of health in seventh grade. And every student in seventh grade is going to take an art. It will be performing arts or it will be visual art. Um, and I know that, again, everybody wants everything to be consistent. But with the staffing that we have to make this work this year, uh, it is going to be an either or. And I understand why uh, people um, would, would have concerns about this, but it is kind of a, a luck of the a situation as to where which course your child falls in because different specials would be aligned with different teams. And unfortunately, this year, that is the way it is. And, and um, I can definitely understand any um, ill feelings towards that. Um, and it is something that we tried to avoid. Um, but it was something that, uh, in the end, was unavoidable. Our virtual remote cohort students will um, have English language arts. We will only be offering math and math accelerated. Um, however, there's a teeny tiny number of math enriched students who had elected for that cohort. And you can expect a call uh, within the next week or so from either myself, one of my assistant principals, or Ms. Mintz, our math department chair, to talk about the best path, best path for, for your child in that virtual remote cohort. Um, we will be offering science, uh, obviously, social studies literacy. And then again, our virtual remote cohort, it's art, performing arts, and that hybrid wellness. In our eighth grade models, uh, in our eighth grade, um, oh, that is a complete typo. It is not literacy. Um, I apologize for that. I've been building this presentation, so I'll clarify that when I get there. In our school-based model, it's same thing, English, all three maths, science, social studies, and world language. In the school-based model, we'll be offering French and Spanish, and it'll be a continuation of what your child experienced in seventh grade. For those students joining us uh, new, uh, we'll be working with our ELA, uh, I'm sorry, our world language department chair, Ms. DiBiase, um, to make sure that we find the proper placement for your child. Every eighth grader will be assigned two of the following arts. Um, and again, it's going to kind of be where the, the chips fall, for lack of a better term, between visual arts, performing arts, and general music. Every eighth grader will have two of those. And they will also have the hybrid wellness. Virtual Remote Academy uh, is English, Math, Math Accelerated. Um, same thing with Math Enriched. It was a one or two students registered for it. Um, and same thing, you'll have a phone call from an administrator or Ms. Mintz, our math department chair, in terms of the best way to accommodate your child within um, our math program next year. Science, Social Studies, and Spanish. Um, I really apologize that I've, you know, I spent all day working on these slides and I'm really embarrassed that I missed that. But it will be Spanish. Um, in our Spanish program, in the remote cohort, those students who took Spanish last year will continue on. Those students who took French last year will have a modified Spanish curriculum that will start at, at, at the beginning. However, with those language skills, we do anticipate those students will be able to move farther. In terms of how that transitions to Mansfield High School, um, we do feel confident that many students will be able to build on their French skills to get to a point where they can move into Spanish too, should they so choose. But every student, um, regardless of what language they took in middle school, can also change their language when they go to high school to get the full offerings that they would need moving forward um, into higher education. And again, like in sixth and seventh grade, it's art, performing arts, and that hybrid wellness for our virtual remote cohort students. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to be talking about our teams here at Qualters. Um, and I want to be clear when I talk about our teams, and that is the fact that uh, we did have to make a lot of changes to make sure that we could expand um, our resources to, again, prioritize a reduction in class sizes over uh, uh, an increase in offerings. And really, it's not talking about average class size where I could have a class of two and a class of 30 and and say I've got this tiny 16 average, we really need pretty much every class to be somewhere in that six, 16 or, or even a few less range. So it was really about a consistent small class size was where we had to uh, invest a lot of our efforts. Team placement letters will be mailed by September 9th, uh, but we're going to kind of double do it here at QMS. We're also going to distribute them by hand during textbook and materials pickup. Um, and that's really out of necessity to make sure each child gets the textbooks and materials that they need. 
Um, but on a personal note, I'm a little, little nervous about um, some mailings uh, based on some experiences that I've recently had with the post office. Um, so I want to uh, make sure that we have that available for families at those times. Um, there has been significant changes to which faculty is on each team, and I am going to go over that with everybody tonight. But I am going to stress um, we are unable to take team requests. And um, I, I'm going to be very clear about that, that if a family reaches out to me and says, I want my child on the such and such team, um, my answer, uh, unfortunately, needs to be at this point that, you know, we're going to go through our scheduling process and place them properly. Um, we also have a situation right now where we don't necessarily offer everything on every team, and that's going to be a massive driving factor because, again, it's all about reducing those average class sizes. There is a split team. Actually, there's two, one remote and one in person that will be made up of um, a few classes of seventh and a few classes of eighth grade to make all of this work. Uh, it, that's common in middle schools. It has not been common here, um, but it is, is something common in middle schools. We also, if your child is on two teams, know that that means they are in the virtual remote cohort. Um, the red team is uh, the virtual remote seventh and eighth grade. Uh, again, seventh graders won't have classes with eighth graders. Um, let me be clear about that. Um, but if I'm a teacher on the red team, I would have I, I, like maybe three eighth grade classes and two seventh grade classes. And the Navy team will be our sixth uh, grade virtual remote team. Those are the teams that are online for the entire school year. Students will also be um, students will also uh, be grouped together in platoons this year, and I'm using the word platoon because Aspen, um, or which people still call X2, but it's Aspen, uh, uses this term to describe groupings of students. Um, when students are in the building, whether it's in that hybrid or hopefully eventually we're all together to minimize, maximize distancing within our classrooms, um, the same group of students, for the most part, will go from class to class together. Um, so it will be the same cohort together throughout the day. Um, this limits student contacts uh, to a degree, uh, but it also reduces the amount of students that need to, to travel through our hallways at the same time. Um, so students can pass uh, you know, some hallway, some classrooms that don't abut the next person in the room will have to go out into the hallway and line up on distancing markers, whereas um, those who are in connecting rooms can actually go through the doors in a, a more controlled manner and not have to enter into the hallway. That will be a great benefit for us in terms of maintaining the appropriate social distancing within our hallways. So realize that, um, again, students will be grouped into those, those platoons, which is probably not the name I would have chosen, but I have learned that if I use the word that's in the computer system that uh, the faculty and everybody's dealing with, um, it becomes a little bit more clear. These are our sixth grade teams. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's gonna, they'll obviously be updated on our website over the next few days, um, but, um, and I'm not gonna sit here and just read teachers' names, um, but you can see that this is, uh, this is the layout that we have for our sixth grade um, this year. Um, and you know, in that um, virtual remote cohort in sixth grade, it's the two-person team, um, which is common in a lot of middle schools. Um, so uh, the Ms. Chimalecki and Ms. Thompson, who those who have been through QMS would know as Ms. Roberts, um, are definitely going to be some amazing instructors within that uh, that model. Um, so again, this is kind of our sixth grade as we've as we've laid it out here. And some of our teams, um, all teachers teach literacy, and some there's a dedicated literacy teacher. Um, this gives us some flexibility in the terms of how many sections or classes we can offer at a time. Uh, so like our yellow and purple team can each offer five classes at a time, uh, whereas the orange team can offer four. Um, so it, it, it's a way that we can, again, maximize our resources to lower that class size as much as we can. Uh, this is our seventh grade, but it does not include our split team, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, again, um, please recognize that my faculty has been working a lot during their summer vacation to prepare uh, for different things and different scenarios, and I can't say enough about the hard work that they've gone. These are our split teams. So they'll be, again, seventh graders will have all their classes with seventh grade. Eighth grade will have all their classes with eighth grade. 
but recognize that um, they will be um, on the same team. So an eighth grader could be on the green team, but they will be, and a seventh grader will be on the green team. And lastly, um, our, our eighth grade teams. These are the, the whole eighth grade teams. So again, having previously had three six and uh, three seventh and three eighth grade teams, we now have three plus eighth grade teams and three plus seventh grade teams. Really four teams if you add, add those two split teams together. So let me go ahead uh, to talk about um, launching a successful school year. Chromebook pickup uh, has already occurred. I know that there's some people, uh, every child at QMS wear one-to-one -one with take-home devices this year. Again, I understand that people have different um, obstacles or um, scheduling challenges that they may have encountered. Ms. Catillo, one of my assistant principals, is all right, my go-to person for Chromebook distribution. Um, if you have an issue uh, obtaining your Chromebook, please reach out to her and we will make sure that everything gets taken care of. Uh, again, I put her email address up there at mary.catillo at mansfieldschools.com. One of the things that we worked through last year was knowing what students had access to, particularly when they were at home. But this list is really for at home and in school uh, once we're back with some students within our hallways um, because we want to minimize the sharing of equipment. So although we'll have stuff to give, give our students um, if they need something, um, also realize that we don't we really want to minimize that sharing. So my teachers uh, and I were expecting these supplies and anything you could do if, if obtaining these is any level of um, problem or hardship for a family, please feel free to reach out to us and we will, we will help with that. Uh, but we're looking, I think, for some simple things, blue and black pens to facilitate editing, particularly in English classes, a pencil and a pencil sharpener for math. Gotta do math and a pencil, I'm telling you. Um, set of colored pencils, scissors, uh, a ruler. Um, it is significant with some of our science uh, materials in particular that they have English and metric sides, a glue stick, a small stapler, a highlighter. Um, it, it'd be really good if people had their own earbuds to not share headphones and stuff like that with the microphone. And when students are at home, that may be a benefit to them uh, rather than having everything broadcasting across the room. Um, six two pocket folders, one for, for each class, and one five subject spiral bound notebook. Not five notebooks, one larger spiral bound notebook. On September 9th, and distributed at our pickup, our materials pickup, your uh, families are going to get three things. You're going to get a team placement letter. Um, as you'll normally get, that'll say your child's on the blank team. Again, if it says red or navy, you're on the virtual remote cohort as requested. You're going to receive your child's schedule um, so that they know where they're going first thing in the um, you know the first day of school. We're also going to get some tutorials and reading the schedule up over the next couple of weeks for students, um, and information will be coming out soon about student orientations. Um, to make sure that they're prepared. And also your child's Google and Aspen credentials are being um, mailed uh, as well. Um, we're sending this and we're expecting the parents have access to their child's Google credentials. They have not changed, so they are what they were at the end of last year, but we wanted to make sure we avoided any situation where um, we want to make sure that we avoid any situation where uh, a, a child may have forgotten them over the summer. Obviously, we'll do what we can to work around scheduling difficulties, uh, but we do need to work with our families to pick up textbooks and materials. We'll have some materials for students to pick up as well. Um, in certain cases, there's some science kits for labs, some art kits. Um, this is for every student, regardless of school-based model or the remote virtual cohort, so please keep that in mind. Um, and this, I did uh, email this out this afternoon in the newsletter with the link to this um, video. Um, and again, uh, the 
we understand we need to be flexible with people, obviously, but again, to um, the more people that can stick to the schedule, the better. We are asking that a parent or guardian try to come with their child for this uh, because we have that before school paperwork that we need to kind of get through as well um, at this time. Um, and again, uh, it's gonna be double dipping to a degree, but we're also gonna be passing out those team placement letters and, and materials at textbook and materials pickup to, to guarantee that people have them and to also make sure that each child gets the right supplies um, at the pickup or materials. Okay. So right now we're gonna look at what are our next steps um, as a school community. So phase two, um, for those continuing that school-based model, that those uh, transitioning to hybrid, um, we're going to start making that transition the week of uh, Friday, uh, uh, Tuesday through Friday, October 13th through 16th. There'd be a lot to go through everything all in one one fell swoop. So we're going to do this same thing again that we're doing right um, now on October 7th at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, so to prepare for hybrid for phase two, there'll be a parent and guardian orientation, the same format that night. We also will have our virtual recorded curriculum night on October 1st, 2020, and we'll get those things out uh, to our families once they are, are ready to go uh, for, our, for our curriculum night, and I'll be excited for that to come. So with that, I'm going to pause for a moment here. Um, and... Um, take uh, I'm going to pause for a moment here and take any uh, questions that my assistant principals uh, can text me uh, to tell me that I should be addressing with the whole group. But I do know that both Ms. Watkins, uh, Mr. Uh, not Ms. Watkins, whoa, got my, my Mary's confused. Uh, Ms. Catello and Mr. Hoffman and Dr. Abrams have been working through this afternoon. So I'm going to kind of give them a second. I know that they've been working through to just see if there's any big themes before I move on. All right, so right now um, I'm going to um, thank everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon and I'd like, or this evening, and I am inviting uh, the parents of our incoming sixth graders uh, to stay on with me for a little bit uh, so that we can um, just talk a little bit more about the transition and answer any specific transition related questions. Okay, uh, I'm going to get started now with um, the grade six transition. Um, you know, there, this is a very important moment 
Um, and although I understand the, the health needs that we face as a community right now, um, we do really need to look at the grade six transition and make sure that our students feel welcome at, even as we start remotely. Our sixth grade teachers do an amazing job of getting to know our students and establishing the relationship, not just in the classroom, but really between the school community as a whole and each individual student. And this is a foundation of what makes QMS a great school. I need our families to understand that over the course of this year, uh, the, I'm sorry, or rather over the course of the first week or so of school, our sixth graders are gonna spend a significant time working with their teachers to learn the practices and routines that they need to be successful in the remote environment. This will include establishing relationships, getting to know each other, um, building a trusting relationship, and learning the ins and outs. And this year, it's gonna be a bigger task than it's ever been. I want you to be prepared for the time being spent at the first few days of school to these ends. I also want to say that when your students do come to the building, if they're in that hybrid model, that we're gonna have to do this again in terms of learning their way around the building and understanding how systems work. This is normal and part of the normal school year. And I've always shared with parents that we do this, um, but I wanna make sure that you understand it because you're gonna see it live in your living room. Um, and, and I wanna make sure that you understand that it is really a foundational piece to a successful education. Um, and once we get through those first few days, the curriculum will start moving, uh, but you can't move into curriculum without having established a relationship. And in schools, that's what we really are in within the relationship business. I also wanted to stop and for a moment to talk more about the status of our Math 6 program. I'd like to first thank Ms. Mintz, our department chair, for really helping us work through this situation, because this is really an unprecedented situation where um, curriculum didn't advance for a, a, a long period of time uh, because we were following those state guidelines last year that were really built on review and reinforced and, and established connections. Um, and also realize that with the, the needs of, the, uh, of our, of our uh, the way we've had to design our classrooms and the way that we have to design assessments in math within the virtual realm, um, it really became clear that having that six and six enriched differentiated model uh, would provide the best and most opportunities for our students because it will allow our students to really move in and out of six and in, in the six enriched curriculum over the course of the year and should help students rise to the top um, that are most prepared for that six enriched, uh, uh, or really, I'm sorry, for the either seven enriched or for that seven accelerated curriculum when they move into seventh grade. Uh, please don't look at this as a, 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 an elimination of leveling at the middle school. Uh, recognize that it's a more flu uh, uh, gonna allow for more fluid movement this year. Um, and do recognize that, that as we go through this process, um, based on the student performance, different assessments will be used uh, throughout the year. And our math teachers will clearly communicate to uh, our parents and guardians um, and our students as to where um, each child stands as we move throughout the year. Um, so we're really looking forward to getting to know our sixth grade and really make sure that we have a very successful school year. Um, so I wanted to just make sure I, I made those points clear. And really, I am so excited to get to meet your sixth graders. And, you know, as a human being, as, as an individual, as just Dave McGovern, I really can't wait to see kids in the, these hallways again. Um, and I know I want everybody to be safe and healthy, but please realize that, that that's what school is. School is community, and I can't wait to, to really establish a great remote community this year and really welcome your children to Qualters. Um, so with that, I'm going to kind of look here, um, give my assistant principals the opportunity to answer some questions. Um, one of the problems with this platform is that I'm actually on a delay um, from YouTube. Um, so that's also part of the reason for the awkward pausing. Um, so with that, um, I hope that um, that we have the opportunity to answer any of those questions. So I'm going to stay here for a couple minutes um, and responds to any um, 
uh, any questions that you may have and, and kind of go from there. I am getting a text here about clarifying language. So for any seventh and eighth grade people left, um, eighth graders in the school-based model will continue with the language they took last year. If they took French, they'll take French in eighth grade. If they took Spanish, they'll take Spanish in eighth grade. In the virtual remote cohort, based on um, what we have the ability to offer, I can we can only offer Spanish. Students who took Spanish in seventh grade will continue with eighth grade Spanish. Students in the virtual remote co cohort who took French in seventh grade in the virtual remote cohort will take a more accelerated Spanish class starting at the beginning of the language or the beginning of the, the curriculum. Um, and we feel confident that that will prepare students with the right opportunities they need um, moving into their freshman year at Mansfield High School. Okay, thank you everybody. And I, um, again, it seems like our questions have died down. Um, I obviously, you can always reach us here at Qualters, um, and uh, and and we're here ready to welcome all of our students on uh, the first day of school, um, September sixteenth. So, uh, thank you everybody. It's an honor and a privilege to serve as the principal of the Qualters Middle School, and uh, I hope that everybody has a nice night. <laughs>